We're going to replace that pin. And then after that, we have to fit the inner primary case uh, around this pin. And there's maybe, I don't know whether there's shimming involved or whatever. Enough. This will have to come off Great. because that's what you do with the stock ones. There's some shimming involved in getting it aligned properly. So now we're replacing yeah. it with this one and then we're checking the alignment to make sure that it all- Everything's lined everything up. Everything lines Not up. Not rubbing here. Clear the well. swing arm and also make sure that their new screws, I assume there's a risk of them falling Don't reach into the, the crank. The crank case. Yeah. yeah, okay. So you have to turn the motor over. We'll just do this in the tank yeah. for now. Yeah. Measure 21.92. Well, go on then. <laughs> 22. 22. 22. 0. 0. 3. Yeah. Okay, great. I think that's about as accurate as we're going to. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's going to be flexing the um, cover when we tighten it up. Yeah, I think we're okay there, but we may. Oh, hang on. Oh, there, there we go. go. I think you got it. Yeah, it was just, it was my finger. Yeah, yeah. My finger was in the way. <laughs> no, that, 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 that was it. I think that was it. That's it. I'll tell you what, as well, Jeff. Of course he's done. Yeah. Your screw holes are not exactly lined up either. Uh oh. Well, not. unless it's up. Oh, there I, we go. I apologise. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, okay. Well, no, you're right. It doesn't line up that well. Because it's actually we're heating on this. Yeah. It's got to rotate a bit more. It does. And it right. can't. So the situation that we have right now is the holes aren't lining up here, these three holes. And so we've tried moving the casing up and down to get the holes to center. But there is not enough travel here um, for us to be able to line up the holes and actually get the, the screws in. It's hitting here on the Z-plate as you can see here, and it's still not enough travel for us to line up. And the other point that Jeff made was that it could be because the bike is sitting on the main stand. And if we take it off the main stand, then maybe the engine will drop a little bit further forward at the bottom, which would allow us to line up these screw holes. So we're gonna try that next. So now we're just putting the original primary cover in a case back on just to see. Yeah, it sees, fits perfect. Goes straight over it. And there's, you know, there's a little... Is the clearance there? Yeah, it's, it's definitely different. So this is the original case back on. It just immediately located with all these three pins, well, two pins here. And we can see that there's a gap around here without any problems. And this bolt here is dead center in the center of this boss. So what we're going to do now is just try putting the new one back on just to see if it's just a fitment problem. And then we're going to take the bike off the main stand and try that. Okay, there you there go. Are. That's on. I mean, it's a snug fit. Fits nicely. We're just, we're like just out. If you hold it like that, just looking at it, this one's fairly close. And these two are way off. If this is an eighth here, we've got to rotate it by the time to get an eighth here. We've got to get quite a bit, there, quite yeah. a bit up here. Uh, let's take this off. We can clamp the bike on, yeah. its, on its wheels and we'll try again with the weight of the uh, bike on the isoelastics just to see if it moves enough. Yeah. That's a snug fit there. Yeah, they're fit. We've got the three screws fitted. We've taken the bike off the main stand and then we've pushed the casing as high up as it would go. Um, we also had this stud loosened off as well. But what we're finding is now that we've got the, the screws in here, it's still very high up here. 
is very tight here and as you'll notice here the gearbox location is very low it's almost to the point where there's just no more tolerance and what we're concerned about is when we put the bike back on the stand to kickstart it for example we're rubbing up against this z plate and these don't move and so it's a bit of a concern so everything seems to be pointing to these holes not being in the correct position as they are on the original primary cover. We think that this Z plate is thicker than on the later bikes. So for example here, as you can see this here, it's fatter. There's more material at the bottom under here and that's why um, there's very little gap between the case and the Z plate. And you'll see here how much material in the Z plate is underneath the nut compared to the other bikes and I'll show you those next. Here's the Z plate on another bike and as you can see it's a lot thinner at the end of the Z plate. This is a, a Mark III electric start bike and again as you'll see the Z plate is very thin at the top. The nut actually hangs over. Well it's uh, just a few days later back at Jeff's place and he's done some work on this inner primary case. The problem that we ran into was that this case when we fitted it on failed on this Z plate here and what we've got to remember is that this is a rubber mounted engine that's the big feature of the Norton Commando so this engine has to be able to move around relative to the frame so we've got to have clearance in here otherwise it's going to uh, it's going to bang on there. I guess we noticed that on the later bikes that we have here this area in here has been pre presumably by the Norton factory these later plates have been machined away in this area yeah. um, uh, to this make more. This was definitely meatier wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah to make the more clearance. Yeah. Alton kind of pointed it out and I, I, uh, I think I understand now this is an early bike and it would have had a frame mounted center stand and uh, the frame mounted center stand was awful and so <laughs> I took it off and replaced it um, with the later uh, center stand that attaches to the uh, to the motor yeah and the difference that's going to make is because of the rubber mounted motor when you have the the uh, frame stand the clearance is going to be different here to the motor mounted stand so when you when you put this bike onto the motor mounted stand the frame actually drops relative to the motor actually, and it closes up this clearance here we saw that and we? my guess is that norton themselves probably ran into a clearance problem and that's why the later ones they've machined this area away because this is actually a nicer shape isn't it when you look at the, yeah. the later ones it's almost like the intentionally I'm, cut it horizontally there yeah. it comes off here yeah. drops off and then goes yeah. straight doesn't i it? wouldn't be surprised if it was a, uh, a quick fix done at the factory when they transitioned from the frame mounted stand to the engine mounted stand they probably weren't whoops yeah. we're having a problem with the clearance here and the quick fix is to grind that down which would have been an option for me so the approach I've taken is um, to solve that is that I have uh, slotted yeah. oh yeah I these see holes that. slightly can you see oh, that yes I can yeah yeah I calculated it would take about two millimeters of uh, of rotation uh, around the crankshaft, basically, to uh, to get to get the clearance we need here. Okay. So now that was my decision. The truth of the matter is, if I had chosen to grind this down, and of course we also it's noticed that this there. this center um, bolt didn't line up either. We would have had to slot this, although that is discussed in the yeah. uh, in the Alton uh, instructions. So option option number one would have been to have ground this down and slot this out, yes. and then this cover would have fitted on uh, with the standard. Yeah, and it holes. would have been orientated a little higher than the the later. Bikes yeah, and that well. was my concern. I wanted this cover to be in the same orientation as the original cover was. And you've got to remember, the original cover fitted on perfectly without any clearance problems here. And uh, Alton did raise another yeah. kind of interesting point that I hadn't thought about, and that is that the, the timing marks 
are on the outer cover the, positioned on the outer cover yeah now the the, the standard Norton timing marks are known to be none too accurate at best. <laughs> but as you rotate this cover, mm. which I've effectively done, it's going to change the um, the accuracy of those timing marks. You would have, yes. Now my, my strategy, which was to have this cover in exactly the same position as the original cover, should mean that the timing marks the same are as the, they were as they were yeah. yeah so i haven't changed the position of the timing marks if i didn't do that in You'd theory be this has been rotated two um, three three degrees yeah. possibly something so like that i don't know what that you know what that all means um clearly it's an issue of this is an early model bike uh i've retrofitted a later center stand that pushes the motor up which makes this clearance problem here appear that wouldn't appear on the later bikes and may not appear on the early bikes if, if this bike still had the frame mounted center stand because if you mount if if you put the bike on the frame stand the motor is actually going to drop yeah under under its own weight. So the good news about that is I think and we will find out that this will fit in now courtesy of these slots in the same position as the original case. No machining here I hope uh, although may have to revisit and this center stud is located uh, right in the center and no no grinding yeah. required um, for that the next issue that uh, Alton pointed out was the potential for uh, the cover fouling on the yeah. swing arm there and yeah. sure enough it did okay. it's actually really hard to see in there um, when the covers on it's very hard to look in there and to measure any clearance and I don't know how much it would actually matter uh, if the cover rested on here, but I assume you don't want it being yeah. held out too yes. far or it's going to distort You're going the... to buckle the uh, So I've cover. got to... Oh gosh, yes. And I've machined um, yeah. machined this area out here. Uh, Alton recommended about two millimeters. This is actually a little bit less than two millimeters machined out. And then the final issue was here, this boss or whatever you call it, uh, is radiused. This internal part of the uh, of this cover is quite different to the original Norton cover. Oh. And it fouled on this on this uh, radius. Oh, I see. So the cover didn't fit uh, all the way onto uh, you know firmly onto the onto the crankcase. And again, it's something that you might not notice. There was a very small gap between the case and the crankcase. I was able to uh, slide a little thin feeler gauge in there. And uh, whether or not it would matter, I don't know. It would probably seal up with sealant and the screws might pull it on. But what I've done, and I had to do it by hand, so it's a bit rough, but I've I've um, chamfered that. this edge a bit. So that was just straight? It, then, was, a, was, it? it was a square edge. It was edge. straight, and then yes. where the square yeah. edge met the chamfer. And the, the problem the was the square edge was coming up against this, uh, this fillet here, or this radius. Yeah. Yep. And the, and uh, so this surface, which is the mating surface, wasn't able to go... Wasn't seating home uh, completely. You know, a couple of these things are things that you might not notice. I'm happy with this now. I think we can fit it on in exactly the same position as the uh, original. We don't need to grind this out. The timing marks should be exactly where they were. Whether they're accurate or not, I yes. don't know. And I may still have to... Take so we'll some see that off here. when we put the bike back on the stand, we'll just be careful to see yeah. if it doesn't. Yeah, when we put it on the center stand, when the, the motor will move up, and yeah. we'll see how much clearance we have there. It didn't foul before with the original case, so it should be okay. In the Alton instructions, they warn about um, oh yes, these yes. screws being too long and hitting the crank. and hitting the crankshaft on the inside of the casing. So I have done some measurements and it does protrude further, but according to my measurements, it, we've still got clearance and we will follow the Alton instructions. And that is after we do these screws up, we will C rotate yeah, crank the crankshaft the by hand just to make sure. So now we're going to measure that gap so that we can compare that when you yeah, put the new case Yeah, and it on. seems fairly consistent. I was thinking of making a mark. You know, we're just trying to get this roughly about the same. So we just want to get in here. 3.97. Okay. So let's say it's going to be roughly, yeah, near enough to four millimeters. Okay. There we go. And that fits on there nicely. Okay, so that's, that's snug up against the crankcase. I'll just back these off. So that's all the that's way down. Hard. 
far as it'll um, go. And it we're actually like really walk- well located in the centre yeah, I think, there. Yeah, I think that you was know? what we observed, yeah, is great. that in this position, it's pretty close to it where is, it was. It is, And then the measurement, with my eye, actually looks more. I think it is just slightly more, yeah. yeah. So we go in here, and... Four, that, four it's 4.2, two. and right. we said the original one was four. Yeah. So we're like yeah. point two of it. Yeah. And and the good news is we've actually gone a little past. Yeah. Really, I'm just wanting to get it get it close to the original. Well, yeah. Everything looks better like this. Yeah. I'm happy with this yeah. now because. This